Leslie Ola BC, and we are back with another episode of Conversations with Leslie. I am so excited to have my next guest, Mr. Derek Chase. Why don't you just go ahead and tell the people who you are and why you're so fabulous? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I guess if I'm fabulous, <laughs> if I'm fabulous, it's because I treat people well. You know, yes. I've made a, a, a life of investing into people. Mm -hmm. um, some notable names of people that I've invested in. Of course, uh, my star pupil is probably Ryan Devon, mm -hmm. uh, investing in the early aspects of his career and making sure that it took off in the manner in which it did. Um, one of my uh, great investments is, of course, continually with my partner, Leron Finney, okay. um, who does Jazzy Summer Nights, uh, the African American Heritage Festival. Um, but I've invested in people for the last 30 years uh, and now it's paying great dividends. So I like to say that that's my that's what I'm known for. I'm known for being present and helping people. Sure. Yes, I, I I I second that notion. And um, I didn't know that y'all were behind the Jazzy Summer Nights. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I remember that was something that happened once a month during the summers, and yeah. then it stopped for a while, right? Yeah, it's, it, we have four installments. So okay. The first Thursday of every month. Uh, starting in June. Mm -hmm. um, this year we started in July mm -hmm. uh, because you know we were projecting COVID with the uh, COVID protocols. So we did uh, July through October. Mm -hmm. um, we had some great artists there. Um, Fatim, uh, Kendrick the Family Soul was one of our headliners. Lady Alma, mm -hmm. um, a host of DJs, DJ Tons, uh, High Def, a lot of uh, great artists from the DMV area, backyard. Oh uh, yeah, it was a family affair. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. It, was a, it, was a, it was a family affair. Yeah, family affair, on the water, right in Baltimore City, so it was, it was, it's been lovely. Okay, so definitely uh, catch in, if you're, if you're in Baltimore, if you're in Maryland, if you need a trip, you need to get away, Is, was the last installment? Yeah, the last installment was October 7th. Oh, okay, it was but next month. year, uh, we're going to start in July and go to August again. We may start in June, okay. depending on where we are with things. And um, the lineup is going to be nothing but, you know, high-level B talent, high-level A talent. Mm -hmm, so it's going mm -hmm. to be more incredible than it's ever been. And we do it right there on the water. Yes. Um, Port Covington. Mm -hmm. It's a $12 billion project that's being developed. It's really a small city being developed in Baltimore City on the water. So uh, if that's where it's housed. Nice, yeah. nice. So even if you miss it this summer, uh, it'll be re it'll be right here for you next year. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, that's yeah. not the only those, those aren't the only things nah, that you nah, do. You nah. do other events in the city. Yeah, we, we do it. We do a ton of events. You know, I have an event hall, uh, six thousand square foot event hall called the Garage. The Garage. Uh, I like we that. We average name. thirteen events a week, um, over forty events a month. And that can cross the gamut from, you know, culture centered events to uh, entertainment where we have vocalists, spoken word artists, yada, 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 mm -hmm. to seminars, to a GED class. Okay. Uh, we have a church that's housed there uh, on Sundays, May the 1, mm -hmm. I hope Baltimore. So we cross the gamut. Uh, we see about, like I said, about 13 events a week, mm -hmm. approximately 2,500 people uh, a week, roughly about 11 to 12,000 people a month. So we, we, we're working hard to make an impact um, in Baltimore, but something that can be impressed upon the world. So we look at uh, uh, the garage headquarters, which we say is the home mm -hmm. of Stand Up Baltimore, as the uh, epicenter and launch pad to a global movement that we're in. I love it. I'm glad I learned about it today and I definitely yeah. look forward to learning more. The little gray cells, that's when I go like that, that's the little gray cells yeah, are working. Like, oh, love studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leslie O, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie O, baby. <laughs> Leslie O, you better know. So, um, although I know you do, you, so you have great lifestyle events, uh, cultural events, but you're not just an events guy. No, no, you no, no. are a community yeah, man. No, Can you no. tell us a little bit about the work that you do? Yes, so my community has my lead hat. You know, some people lead with their arts hat, they lead with their business hat. And we do art and we do business. But community is what, what my, my passion is. Mm -hmm. um, started from a little boy. Um, this really looking at how we were being impacted by the crack 80s, 
mm -hmm. and having that deep seated spiritual relationship with God uh, at an early age. You know, I like to say I discovered my voice and I discovered my purpose at age seven years old. So I've never been off a purpose. Mm -hmm. I've never had a life that was not purposeful. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, I've always asked myself this singular question. Uh, and it's really not a question, it's really a statement. And it's not the discovery of your gifts that matter. It's the discovery of who your gifts will serve. It's good to discover your gifts, mm -hmm. but a better question is who will your gifts serve? Will they be self-serving? All right, will they be exploited for other people? Or will you utilize your gift to uh, return humanity um, back to his glory? So um, I'm highly motivated by that. Um, it, it wakes me up, it puts me to sleep. It gives me all good memories. Um, I don't have any spiritual acid reflux, you know, from not doing right and being right by people. Mm -hmm. So I found the greatest amount of value and my ability to find the gifts of other people and bring that to fruition. So uh, my community work, at the center of my community work, is the human being, um, the quality of their state of mind, the quality of their ideas, the quality of their economic uh, progress, and the quality of their impact uh, on the world. So what we do is we manufacture freedom. Mm -hmm. all right? We teach people how to be free. Uh, within the context of their own ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to that, uh, we put the resources around them to take their ideas from uh, concept to manifestation, ultimately to the marketplace. Uh, so that's at the foundation of the movement. And then beyond that, you get into you know, the Stand Up Baltimore agenda. You can always go to standupbaltimore.org StandUpBaltimore.org. StandUpBaltimore.org. Stand 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 yep, yep, and we have uh, 82 initiatives li listed. Uh, 17 of those 82 initiatives have been created and have its own leadership now. And nice. we started off with just me as a visionary uh, with this idea. Then we went and found the people who saw in themselves what we saw in the world. And then we built infrastructure around those people. And that is what we're doing. Uh, ultimately, you're going to uh, see Baltimore rise, and at the center of that rise will be this activity that we've generated at the uh, Stand Up Baltimore uh, headquarters. I like the vision, and it's not just ideas and dreams, nah, it's nah. actual tasks, goals, execution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to every day. Playing, playing chess. Yeah, you're playing chess with them. You know, I love ultimate it. Ultimate impact. So let me ask you this. Uh -huh. In your role and in your self-definition, in the way you define yourself, yes. um, visionary, leader, man, right. um, how, how and, and more, of course, father, husband, you oh, know, partner, businessman, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to limit you, but right. in all of the ways that you define yourself, how do you rank the man definition or the way you define yourself as a man, how does that relate to the quality of the performance or your execution of your goals or your leadership? How does your view of uh, your manhood contribute to that as in plus or minus or however oh, without, it without a shadow, first and foremost, it's an honor to be a man, right? It's an honor. You don't, you can't sign up to be a man, right? It's not something that you can put an application in. Uh, being a man is something that you have to tap into, right? And then once you tap into it, it in itself begins to reveal itself to you. And if manhood has not revealed itself to you, then you are not a man, hmm. all right? <clears throat> so um, a lot of people imitate men. Uh, a lot of people try to be their best man. But again, you know, uh, no one teaches a lion to be a lion. Mm -hmm. It's innate. Mm -hmm. right? And the beautiful thing about being human is you have a choice to tap into the innate aspects of your being. Of yourself. Mm -hmm. right? So you become a man when you are intentional about tapping into that and allowing that to guide you. And I'm not just talking about male tendencies. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about male genitalia. Mm -hmm. all right? I'm not talking about uh, how men may function uh, uh, just in society. I'm talking about that 
driver that uh, uh, produces strength and vision and responsibility because I look at manhood as a divine destination and a divine responsibility to assure that God's vision, depending on how you perceive God, is achieved. Um, and when that is misconstrued, all right, then the world begins to lose its direction. So it's very important for men to understand men, uh, to be men, uh, and to demand that manhood is respected. So I leave with it. So what I'm hearing is, is really, and most importantly, first and foremost, it's a personal and divine relationship. Yes. First, yes. before you even deal with the rest of society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know, um, going back to the, uh, the, the bio biological function of us as a species of human being, um, that's very important. Uh, it's very important for us to understand that we must keep this thing going, mm -hmm. and that that sacred relationship. Uh, that has been bestowed on men uh, as being the carrier of the sacred seed that allows the germination of the planet to continue. Like you cannot take that for granted. Like that is a responsibility. You are carrying the seed of the future from birth, right? And once you're you're able to tap into that, mm -hmm. you ask yourself. You know, you would give that responsibility to me. So what is it, God, uh, or creator, or divine energy, that I need to know in order to carry that out? So that question that you begin to ask of the universe, mm -hmm. you begin to ask of God, begins to reveal itself. Mm -hmm. And then it asks you to be a few things. It asks you to be sensitive, right? Most people don't realize that to be a man is not to be violent. Not to be a man is not to um, to overpower. To be a man is to be ultimately to be sensitive to the need uh, and the direction of balancing the planet, because that is your responsibility. Your responsibility is to look at the inequities of the planet and act in accordance to make sure that everybody is being well taken care of and well managed. All right. But in order for you to take on that responsibility, you first and foremost, most, you must first and foremost understand that that is what your role is. And uh, you know, in a time uh, where you know we feel like we can recreate um, definitions, uh, sometimes you know we, we steer away from uh, that which does not require words. All right. So sometimes we steer, we steer away. away from that, that which does not require, require words. words. Okay. So you want to go into manhood as a definition, but manhood in itself is not defined by words. It's defined by an innate responsibility that you know once you tap in. Got it. Right. So we don't need language. You know, when I show up, you know I'm a man. <laughs> you can feel it when you walk into the room. You can feel it, no question. Absolutely. Yeah. So, the, a big takeaway from that is that that does need to be respected. Yeah, yeah, um, and do you think that men are respected? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, first and foremost, so many men have had toxic examples of what manhood looks like. So I think that, you know, by virtue of history, um, by virtue of, uh, uh, if you look at the 19th, 20th century of, of what manhood has been globally. Um, it's been suppressive. Uh, it's been domineering. Um, it has been vile. It's been uh, con uh, uh, conniving and snivorous. It's been all these things that are not principled, right? So, you know, if, if, if a person is observing this mm -hmm. as the definition, as the, as the the prescribed definition of manhood, mm -hmm. you got people, you know, men will look at that and say, I don't want to be no part of that. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like I can be that and be human. Mm -hmm. And at the point that manhood can no longer be human, then it becomes a question. Like, you know, what is this mess? Right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that we are at, at a time now where, um, like, men have to step up and lead by example. Um, 
in terms of making sure, uh, as I said before, that the planet is well managed and taken care of. We've had a uh, caregivers of the planet who have the anatomy of men, mm -hmm. but they don't have the divine assignment of men. Mm -hmm. And they have presented man, manhood in a manner in which, you know, they themselves have disrespected manhood. And as a result of them disrespecting manhood, you know, people really don't understand what it is. Okay, I get it. I get it. Touch it. Little gray cells. Yeah. So without that, without that, that tapping, you have men who are physically men, right. but haven't really tapped into the responsibility and the understanding of what their role is and what they are exhibiting, right. or the behaviors that they participate in are things that disrespect what true manhood is in and of itself. Yes. And if you disrespect yourself, how is anybody else going to respect you? Yeah. And if you perform or exhibit behaviors that are not worthy to be respected or followed or listened to, yeah. then people will stop, they'll, they'll take the work out of your hands and they'll just do and it for you. They'll do it themselves. You know what I'm saying? But look, if that's manhood, well, that's definitely not manhood. Yeah, I'm not I listening can, to you. I mean, you have people who say, look, man, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to, you can't get your man there together. I'm gonna be the man. I'm yes. gonna take that role. I'm gonna take yes. that role. And you know, again, or I'm gonna just do this without a man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, when when you have uh, a society um, that have left that role abandoned, how can people get upset when people assume the role? That's and they point. do the best they can. That's but when a, but when the new man that's being created stands up those men will fall back because they don't have a choice because they themselves need a guy. So we're at a time, we're at a time now um, where we have to call on, you know, the highest aspect of man to begin to present that. We are at a time where in the highest... Well, we have to present the highest aspect to bring... So my point is, Manhood is has shifted all the way to the left. Mm -hmm. Because it shifted all the way to the left, to just to bring it back to the center, center. you got to go all the way to the perfected definition I of see. man. Mm -hmm. Just to just bring, to it, bring back it to the balance to, to make up balance. for the deficit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Men have done a lot of damage to the planet. Like they done damage to um, to women. Like I, I have a poem that I say is the most dangerous uh, place for a woman between the ages of eighteen and twenty five. Between 18 and 20, 18 and 50, is in the house with her husband. 18 and 50? Between 18 and 50. The most dangerous place for a woman in the world is in her house. Is in her, her house? Yes. With, with her, her husband? husband. Dangerous? Yes. Why? That's a, that's a statistical fact. Oh. Because the, 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 the most of the violence that is directed to society is mm -hmm. not in, in, in wars or foreign wars. It comes from those who are the dominant to those who are the uh, less, less dominant. dominant, right? And unfortunately, based upon how uh, sexuality has defined these roles, mm -hmm. man perceives his role as being the, the dominating figure. Mm -hmm. I have to dominate, I have to crush, I have to destroy. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's violence of, of, of language, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's, it's uh, the violence of, uh, of, of, of ignoring, see, you know, when you have the power, if, if you ignore something mm -hmm. and you're the primary person that has to manage and take care of and feed and all this, you can ignore and just not allowing a person to have a voice is violent, mm -hmm. right? And then you get to the physical violence mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm going to dominate you because I can. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, you get to the sexual violence. Mm -hmm. You know, how somebody said to me, you know, people go to McDonald's. And they pray before they eat chicken nuggets, but they won't pray to enter into the womb of a woman. <laughs> so, 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 you know, you know, you, you know, how many songs have you heard? Is it beat the pussy up? Yes. You know, like, and every time I hear that, I'd be like, no, don't yeah, do that. Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah. Well, what, I mean, what? But the psychology of that. All right. Now I want it to swell. I want it to be red. I want it to be raw. I want to destroy it. Like that's violent. So yeah. the, the most violent place for a woman between the ages of 18 to 54 
is at home with her husband or with her significant other. Mm -hmm. That's violence. So, you know, we're, we're asking and we're calling for, um, you know, a different perspective of manhood mm. that, you know, um, that can be powerful and not domineering, all right? That can be powerful and at the same time be sensitive. It can be powerful and at the same time learns how to fall back and allow something that may know, have a greater knowledge or insight to lead, even if, if, if it physically doesn't appear as more powerful. So we're moving into a different aspect of life, to seeing who we are. And when we create a, a society where we allow the best knower to lead, mm -hmm. whether from a sex standpoint it's masculine or feminine, then you know this this uh, this uh, I guess cloud of sexuality, all right, will begin to dissipate because. You know, a lot of sexuality um, is unfortunately about who is the giver and who's the receiver. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not about the collective sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, what are we doing? Am I doing you or are you doing me? No, 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 no. Let's be doing it doing, together. Let's do it, let's do it together. <laughs> let's be yeah. sensitive enough, all right, to know what the other person is asking for. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And just be available enough to give it to them. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that's that's really where we are. And would would you, I want, I want to ask you that and then go back to it and pose another question from something you said earlier. Okay. So with that, would you, oh, I lost my point. Um, so I'll go back to the other question. Uh, yeah. So when you said, so the most dangerous place, so in counter to that, what do, where is the safest place? The safest place for a woman? Yes. Whew. Wow, man, that, that, that's, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Where is the safest place for women? I think that right now, that is why the planet is not in balance. Because she and herself does not have a safe place. She, she's exposed. She's not covered, right? And not covered by, you know, the physical physical nature of man, mm -hmm. but just the presence of knowing that if 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 this house falls in, they are going you're gonna have a person to strategize with, all right, mm -hmm. uh, to take and assume a level of responsibility to make sure, which includes listening to you, to make sure that we exit. All right. So again, when I think of the safest place for a woman, uh, it's probably in the comfort of her own mind at this time. Hmm. How about that? Knowledge of self. Yeah. So important. Yeah. Dang. Always number one. You gave me a lot of good things to think about. I, li I like this perspective. Um, back to doing this together. Yes. That translates not only with intimate sexual time, but yeah. would you say that's in basically every relationship and interaction? Between male, female, that might be lacking. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 our responsibility is to ask one another the right questions about our our mission, our emotions, our movement. That's mm -hmm. we have, we have the responsibility to be the sounding board, all right, for uh, how one another's growth manifests. Right, mm -hmm. that's at the core of our responsibility to each other. What makes us safe is to make sure that when I decide that I'm going to do something, that I've, I've gone through a process which assured that there is going to be uh, uh, the path of least resistance to get there. That's what we're helping each other to do. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that I'm leading you, meaning that I'm taking you someplace. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm, that's not the manhood that I think uh, the, the planet needs. Mm -hmm. It's the, the manhood that assumes, all right, that we are going someplace and want to be, wants to create a table for the best discourse to take place so that collectively we can have the strategy to get there, which empowers everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels like they are, they are empowered. And part yeah. of a team. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just look at, yeah, I, I am very... Uh, intentional with, with, with my man. I'm very intentional. You know, I, I do not take it for granted. Um, I do not I do my best 
not to disrespect it. Um, and I do my best to, ma to, to manage to make sure that I'm accountable to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So that's how I move. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I love uh, your very clearly well thought out and connected to um, definition, perception of all of these points. And I see the vision and I see the the path and the plan like, okay, this piece goes to this piece and then that into this. And you can't have this one without that one. You know, that's all very logical, right. which is the number one thing that I really respect in people in general. Right. You know, logic, reasoning, um, set a goal, set the smaller task to get you to the goal, right. execute and, and just get it done. And that is um, something that you have always exhibited. I've seen from a distance, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to see men and women more like sit down and have conversations to kind of get on the same um, level of understanding. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that you agree, right. but I think just to be able to sit and listen to somebody else answer the same questions or right. speak on the same topics and then let it be another woman and then another woman and another man and another man and have these conversations where people are, oh, okay, well, actually, I thought it's more like this. And then when you come and now you start knocking off what doesn't stand to logic right. and reason right. and what's observed in nature in my opinion you know maybe that's one of those ways where we take that skewed from the left all the way to the right for us to get back balanced right. to the center yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean here's the thing all right um we, we all on a human journey mm -hmm. right male female and in that process you know the beautiful part about it is that we're free to explore um in, 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 in the, the, the uh, variety and the spice of life, mm -hmm. all right? In our exploration, all right, we must be, become gifted in asking ourselves the question, why are we, who are we, where are we, you know? And if we're just in this place and we're really never asking our why, mm -hmm. all right, then exploration just becomes it becomes a pleasurable uh, pursuit of nothingness, right? Mm -hmm. So you end up with nothing but experiences, mm -hmm. not having uh, the fulfillment of an experience process and executed and the soul elevated as a result of the experience. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what we miss. We miss that. Um, again, you know, I look at those who have governed the planet and, you know, I value some of the things that they've done, like, you know, how we've advanced technology. Mm -hmm. But there's a different technology that must be advanced, especially as it relates to um, understanding, you know, gender and gender as a part of the seven hermetic uh, laws, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not gender in the standpoint of how it's commonly thought of. Mm -hmm. But there's seven hermetic laws. Mm -hmm. Those seven hermetic laws, I won't get into all seven of them, but one of those laws is law of gender, mm -hmm. and um, it's very important to understand, you know, masculine and feminine energy, mm -hmm. all right, and understand, you know, that we in ourselves um, are positioned to experience both of those, mm -hmm. um, and one of us are capable of fulfilling more of one than the other. Right? Mm -hmm. And that is just where the gender balance lies. Mm -hmm. All right? It's we both are, you know, in terms of uh, 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 an organism, we mm -hmm. both have masculine and feminine energy. All right? I am, you know, uh, in the science of master, right? So I'm a 5% or two, right? Mm -hmm. and I know we don't get into the science. But, <laughs> but look, that's it. You know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful walk. And uh, yeah, it's a walk not to be judged. I have people all the time, I don't, I don't make no judgments, all right? Now, if you ask me to calculate, all right, I calculate a thing, I'm pretty sharp. Calculate a thing, I can tell you what a thing is if you want me to tell you what it is. I can't. Okay. Right? But how it experiences this thing called life, it ain't up to me, mm -hmm. all right? Because I'm tapped in, all right? The only thing I can do is be a living example.
Right. The only thing I can do is be passionate about life. The only thing I can do is be a sounding board if you have a question about my experience. And hopefully my experience can help you navigate and get the best path forward for your experience. That's it. So we learn that. All right? But again, you know, for me, it's about being tapped in. I stay tapped in. I ain't never tapped out. I'm there. I'm present. I'm <laughs> all the time. Ready to go. You know? Yeah. And I make no apologies for that. Yeah. I, mean, I don't make no apologies for I'm a man. I make no apology for that. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And definitely your experiences and sounding board has definitely helped me. I would say that 100%. Um, and I respect those who have not just experiences right. right but real lessons learned in life that they can pass on to you to you if you're paying attention that you can apply to your own life and oh, I, yeah. I appreciate that yeah, yeah. I appreciate that absolutely I thank you for your time yeah, thank you your, for your time your energy yeah, yeah, no your spirit your soul uh it's been a pleasure talking with you. No, it's been a pleasure to be here. You have a very calming. Normally, I'm like, ah, it's less <laughs> and I'm like, just like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, it's good. What the going on? Yes, peace. Dude, I have a lot of, you know, we, we, <laughs> we, no, we, bother, it's not bother. Yeah, Like I'm very. We, 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 we can be high energy. We can be energetic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm present. <laughs> I give you what the moment requires. Right, right. If you require to be aggressive, I'll give you all the aggression you want. Right. But it's not because I'm just walking around aggressive. Raw, like ready to do it. The moment doesn't even, the moment requires you to be quiet and reflect. Yeah. Wait, why are you, why are you talking? <laughs> I'll ask you, why are you, ask, ask, why are you talking? Like, you're not the wisest person in the room. Why are you talking? Mm -hmm, all right? Mm -hmm. And I'll just where I'll leave you. All right? There are only two positions in the universe. Student teacher, two positions, all right, mm -hmm. and both of them are, 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 are worthy of being praised and worthy of being praised most, much, all right. Once you recognize that you know to be a student is not an inferior position, mm -hmm. all right, you put yourself in that position a lot. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, if you position if you position yourself as the student by virtue again of listening. You'll know when it's time for you to start teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. when, it, when, the, when the student is ready, the teacher shall appear. Mm -hmm. I believe on that. Note. Yes, yes. And I was actually going to close with that too about being an eternal, the eternal, the idea of the eternal student. Right. But you took it to the next level because hey, you got to you got to graduate. But when the time is right, look, we present. Yeah. We present. Hey, look, I'm proud of you. You push it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank hey, you. Yes, ma'am, brother. <laughs> oh, so thank you, D Chase. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Conversations with Leslie. D Chase presents. Oh, and what's the website again? Uh, Standupbaltimore.org. You can follow me on IG at D Chase Presents, uh, Facebook uh, at Derek Chase, still D Chase Presents at gmail.com. But no, we just out here doing some good stuff, man. You know. And I'll put the. The info tag right at the bottom, yeah, right yeah. here. I look forward to seeing this. So, DJ's presents. Thank you. Yeah. All Push. right, peace. <laughs>